it's October, which means it's the month of gore loving artists to lose out their inner kink without being stared at with weird looks. And it's also the month that has Halloween. Yes, let's focus more on that. Whenever I think of Halloween, this legendary YouTube video always comes to my mind. The Ghost Duet. If you remember Ghost Duet, that means several different things. First, it means that you remember the time when internet was relatively less toxic. Second, it means that you were at the golden age of YouTube. And third, it means you're just like me. Oh, that's f Anyways, the point is, when I was a small brain, Ghost Duet had a great impact on me, almost to the point it's a teeny tiny little part of my life. And so, to commemorate such a beautiful artwork from 7 years ago, damn, I'm old. And also to celebrate the October of 2020, Jesus, it's end of f***ing 2024, I decided to make the Ghost Duet into a Bluetooth speaker. <clears throat> Never gets old. First thing we need is a Bluetooth speaker. Can't believe I drew this for this joke. Luckily, I found a Bluetooth speaker from 2014, and I'm using a JPEG image because, well, this is what it looked like a few minutes after I found it. Despite the fact that this is quite old, I was surprised that it was still functioning very well. Oh yeah, and the speaker was functioning well too. Wait, what? Now we have to construct the base for this whole PCB while trying to sustain all of its feature. My go-to method is to make the base as simple as possible at first. The rectangle. After taking measurements of the electronic parts, we have to estimate how big the rectangle should be. I mean, what shape it should be, and holes for the wire placements. We also want to make holes for the bolts, which fix the PCB and the shells together into place. Mm, same as mine. Once the first model is done, we'll have to print it with our expensive Bamboo Lab X1C. Oh, hello. You want to hear a joke? I buy this for $1,400. <laughs> it's not a joke. While my food expense for one year is doing its job, let's move on to modeling the two ghosts. Now there is one important thing that we have to keep in mind before actually start modeling. It's the space in the ghost. Meaning how are we going to fit this heavy ass whopper speaker, I mean woofer speaker into each ghost. And also how should we cover up the woofer? Because according to the great god of Google, these types of speaker need kind of an enclosure for its function to maximize. So I've done some measurement sketches of the woofer. And finally, I have decided to make a holder for the woofer. And since the woofer speaker already had bolt holes on it, we can probably make holes to screw in some bolts onto the holder. Bolt, bolt holes, bolt holes, bolt holes. Anyways, after a few trials and errors, and trials, and errors, and self-hatred, emotional damage, and trials, I found the optimizing woofer holder. Perfecto. It doesn't even drop. This is great. Now that the woofer holder is actually complete, we can actually go back to our original plan, which was to sculpt the two ghosts. If you haven't noticed that I suddenly switched the topic over to the woofer holder from ghost sculpting, you may have ADHD like me. Anyways, for smooth and wavy object like the ghost, I thought it'd be better to use sculpting to make the overall shape first and then manually retopologize the sculpture. I know there are auto retopology programs out there, but I find manual retopology better in some ways. Placing the consecutive vertex one by one feels like putting up dominoes one by one, but better because you can't control the dominoes. It's hard work, yes, but I think you can check each vertex as you place them and it also kind of calms your mind too. So yeah, I think manual retopology is better. Only if you're good at it. Matame, por favor, señor. Should have just used auto retopology. After modeling the fat ghost, it's time to model the skinny ghost. I just weight shamed something with no mass. The process wasn't really different, it's just the same process with less work because, well, skinny. Don't weight shame. 
After each of the ghost meshes were done, we used the solidify modifier to make it thicker. I was thinking the ghost could be like the cover for each woofer, which I'm not sure if it'll work, but the future me got it covered, I think. After finishing the ghost, I printed it to see how it looks like in real life. Let's take a look at some key characteristics. Uh, it's, it's white. And moved back to building the shell for the speaker. The speaker is composed of four major parts. The long skinny part, the part that we shove the thing into, the part that vibrates, and a logically potential fire hazard. We already modeled and edited the shell of the long skinny part. So next we have to make the shell for the part that we shove the thing into. This part needs to be placed perpendicularly to the wall. So in order to do that, we needed a second wall to fix the part onto. This also took a few different trials to get the right hole placement and you know other features, but at the end, we got there. No way, it's the wrong direction. And I even added a feature where I can slide the part into the wall, making the whole thing easier to separate and assemble together. So now we have two walls. For the two walls to come into place, rather than using a super glue, I thought it'd be better to have a corner piece that can hold the walls in place. Since if I use super glue, that would just interlock the wall placements and hard to disassemble. And now what we have left is the top shell the right shell and the front shell. God, there's much to do. I'm just going to print the right wall and just make some engraving on the front wall and print it with a few corners. While that was being printed, we need to solve a few major problems. First, how are we going to make the top shell? Second, should we fit each woofer into each ghost? And third, how will we make it look like the ghosts are in air? And oh yeah, we also need the mic. <laughs> Well, let's do that first. Okay, this looks like a scratched potato on a stick, but at this point, I'll just take it. Let's deal with our first problem. How should we make the top shell? Since it was put together by corner pieces at the bottom, it was steady, but not steady enough. So I thought perhaps making a carpet-like top shell which holds all the walls together would be nice. I made a duplicate wall for the boolean and I think the base top shell is done. But before printing it, we have to consider our second problem, the woofer placement. Because based on where the woofer placements are, the holes should be cut out differently. It seems like the woofer would fit inside the fat ghost, cause he got some <laughs> But it seems impossible to fit one into the skinny ghost. So after some thoughts, I found out that this may lead to different sound quality from the left and the right. So instead, I've just decided to put the woofer under the shell and create a structure that would hold the ghost up as it also transfers the sound from the woofer to the ghost. By the way, at this stage, it was near end of October. So I just printed the top shelf praying it would come out okay. And while it's printing, I duplicated the ghost and shrunk it in size to make the ghost holders. Okay, this uh, looks kind of disturbing, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so I got everything printed out. I got the top part printed out. We got the uh, butt plug, I mean the, uh, the ghost holders printed out. As you can see, the skinny one is fitting perfectly. Maybe I'll have to adjust the size for the uh, fat ghost because Okay, this looks inappropriate, but as you can see, the size is too big. We'll have to reprint this. Other than that, I found out that I was a little bit stupid because I didn't think about this part on the side, which makes this whole thing. It doesn't go all the way through, so it's it's very tilted. Maybe I'll have to make a, some kind of a barrier or a holder up to the same level like that on the other side of the wall. It can be fixable. The big question is, can I fit this into this holder, which I did not try out yet, but I will try out right now. Uh, 
doesn't fit. It doesn't fit perfectly, at least not as I expected it to be. We'll have to grind the part out. I think that's our only option right now. Okay. Okay, we'll have to do, we'll have to make this work somehow. So a few changes I made. I ground the parts so that the speaker now fits to the hole. I got some help and got some of the parts covered with primer. I reprinted the Fat Ghost holder so now it fits. And I guess we just have to test out if the whole electronics are working fine. I am not sure if this will turn on. Oh. Yes, it's connected. Yeah, it's working. So this is without the amplifier. But if we put these on, you can actually hear the sound more clear. <laughs> oh God, I love this. I love this. Now I got all the parts painted. I colored the top shell as well to give a more complete feeling. And if we put all the parts together, this is what we have. Let's try some music on as well. And yeah, mm. it looks it looks good, but it can be better because there's no background. So if we draw the background with color pencil and stick it onto the back, the Ghost Duet Bluetooth speaker is finally finished. This one took me a lot of time to make because first, I'm an Asian with low self-confidence and second, I started to work mid-October and I even thought perhaps just ditching this project but I pushed myself at the very last second, making it on time. You'd be watching this on November but it's uploaded on October so I still call it a win. Anyways, I think this is my first project where it's somewhere around the middle of electronics and a diorama. The electronics part was, as always, fun, and adding the background and painting, the floor, blah blah blah, it felt very wholesome. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe, it really helps me out a lot, it gives me motivation. Please, please subscribe. I'm desperate! But anyways, this was Korean Butter, and I will see you in the next video, with something more fun, I guess. Uh, and I'll, I'll just leave this on here.